Okay, ready, go. Okay, ready, go. Hmm. All right, so let's take a look at what you're doing here. <clears throat> so you do have this uh, trigger motion using the body before the backswing starts. The body shifts it to the left a little bit and then starts the backswing. Here, the arms and club are rotating together, but toward the end, you are introducing additional club head motion here. Over Go up here and then suddenly at the end, you do this. Mm -hmm. Instead of having continuous motion to this position here. You're moving the body here and then try to drop it. So that means um, in terms of the curly head motion, it's not continuous. Mm -hmm. You have two stage motion here. Yeah. yeah. So as you start the downswing motion, the body is turning, but the curly head is uh, dropped. And also in the, uh, in the downswing, you're using your arms a lot here. It's all arms. So the whole purpose of uh, shifting this way and then having trigger motion here is to promote the good low body motion. But actually what happened is with this, and then you're just uh, turning the body without really loading onto this side. And then as you, as you stop, you're dropping the clip down, and then it's all arms here. To catch up. Mm. So in other words, you don't really feel the motion of the clip head that well. And then uh, in the down the line view here, yeah. So and also the way you start the curly head motion is you shift the body and then just lift this up here. Instead of shift and then let it go. You have to let it go, but what happens is you're just lifting it with the wrist action here. And then this Posture makes it, uh, you know, your, 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 your posture really awkward here. Mm -hmm. What happens is you keep the arms down here. The body is uh, leaned this way quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Instead of letting the arms and club go and then all the way here. And then natural reverse pivot posture instead of intentionally going like this. Mm -hmm. So your hands are quite low here. And then the right... Right upper arm is uh, against the, the, the chest here. You're going like this. And then in the end, you have a way crossover. And also see how your clavet starts here. So before that, if you look at the path of the clavet in the back swing, the clavet went this way here. Mm -hmm. But as you start the downswing, you have this, uh, what is it? Um, I forgot the term. Over the top. Term. Over the top, yeah. You have the tendency over the top when you start the, yeah. the downswing. So um, more than anything, what you need to uh, develop is uh, the feel of a clip head motion. So <clears throat> if you relax your wrist a little bit, and as you swing back and forth, Instead of uh, introducing this uh, strange body motion, more than anything, you have to feel the motion of the club head and then let it go around your body all the way. And then let it go. Instead of going to this part. So in a sense, your body is uh, obstructing the motion of the arms and uh, club. Okay, it's so. connected, is that one? Um, it's too, too uh, rigid and the tight. You go too flat here, and then you have a severe crossover here. From here, you have over the top downstream. So if you have a crossover, but still it's coming back, if the curve is coming back along the same path, it's not a problem. But you go here and then cross over and then you have over the top swing. So that's why you're pulling in. Um, so let's relax and then let's dance with me first. Okay. Okay. So relax your arms. 
Just uh, try to use your legs a lot and uh, try to feel the rhythm. Okay? If you just uh, try to turn the upper body, then you, you cannot feel the rhythm. Only when you have active leg action, then you can feel. Do you consider yourself a good dancer? <laughs> so here, put the arms down here and then we'll throw the arms um, here, here, here. So the common thing happens here is you try to lift this right arm up here and then try to pull it down. But just to try to throw about this high, and then let the gravity bring it down okay. about this height here, okay? If the right arm goes too high, then you try to pull it down. So just to throw, stretch, stretch, stretch the arms, throw, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And as you do, as you do, if your body moves too quickly, too early, then what happens is you have this motion here. Okay? You have a, almost a figure eight mm -hmm. type motion. So you have to time the lower body shift and the upper body turn so that the lower body actually really helps the throw of the arms. Mm -hmm. so your, your body is uh, shifting a bit too. So relax, 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 relax. So go here and then throw, throw. Throw, throw, oh, no, no, do not slide the pelvis, okay? Just with this, just wind up, good wind up. All you need is a good wind up, and from here, throw everything. Yes. So here, instead of, instead of insufficient shoulder turn, and you try to start the, the, the opposite turn by sliding the pelvis first and then going this way. Instead of that, you have enough turn here from here, just to throw in one motion. Mm. That way you can activate the, the legs both ways. So this way and then that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Yep. So you have to slide the pelvis quite a bit if in the back swing, if your body is not ready. If your body is not that uh, ready, then you have to slide and then try to do something here. Mm. But if you have enough body turn and the good push with the right leg here, then you don't need that. So go up here and then just using the legs, throw. Ah, uh, not, not this one here. Just the throw and then kick this side. Mm. So what happens again, if you slide and then bring it down, then this happens. Then the lower body action does not really help the upper body right. turn. Right. So in order to use the legs to help this motion, then you have to wait and then throw at once. And then stand on this side. And then stand, stand on the left side after throwing. Then shift to the right, left, right, yes. Left, right, left, right. This is the, this is the, the rhythm. Then you are really throwing the arms this way, throwing the arms mm. that way, instead of sliding and swinging. Mm. Instead of doing this, then the, your pelvis will weave like this. So just wait and then. So you're in your image, you are throwing the arms out and up instead of pulling it down. So it's not about pulling this down here but rather drop this and then throw and stand, stand on the left side here. The same thing in the back swing, throw and stand on the right side, and then throw on the left side, yeah. Mm -mm. Still you are doing this action here. Instead of the drop and then throw up. Emphasize the up, 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 up. Now, so with this, with this, imagine we have uh, switches up here, and then by turning, and you're, you're reaching out and touch the switch. You turn and then touch the switch. No, so now you did this. Mm. 
but the goal is not goal is not this motion, but rather turn and then reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out. Yeah. So when you reach out, when you reach out, if you want to reach out this way, then you can really stand on the left side and then reach out. When you go to the right, you stand on the right side and yeah. So yes, so the, the pattern you have to get away from is this motion here. Pelvis is sliding and then this is following. Right. Then your legs cannot really help the upper body turn that much. Okay? So again, dance with me. So left, right, throw, throw the arms, throw the arms, throw the arms. So if you look at my posture here, I go only about this much and wait until the gravity takes over, and then throw up here, throw up here, throw up here, throw up here. I don't have this motion, this motion here, okay? Just to reach out, reach out, left, right, left, right. One, two, three, wind up, swing, and then stand on the left side. This is the, the flow. Again, on your own. Stand on the mat, okay, again, S swing, 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 one, two, three, wind up, throw, yes, that's the, huh? that's the flow. And again, if you have a completely independent motion of the lower body and upper body, then that means you cannot really use the lower body to promote the upper body time. So the lower body is the main, uh, uh, what is it, driving power plant for the, uh, the upper body, okay? Or the locomotive here. So throw, stand up, stand up, left up, right up, left hip up, right hip up, swing, swing, one, two, three, wind up, throw. So this is the shun dance, shift the turn dance. And as you repeat this motion, and then when you have a continuous motion, then automatically before this turn is completed, you will slightly shift it this way. And then when you shift, instead of pelvis going sliding, try to just drop the upper, upper body, yeah, like that. And then throw, then you'll have good situation where you can use the legs to push the ground. Yeah, so this way we can confine the body motion in this uh, cone-shaped space. So the head is not shifting that much, but your pelvis can go quite a bit. So imagine you have something, a handle here, holding the handle here, go, 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 just using the legs and the pelvis here. Hmm. When in this motion, when the upper body leans that way, then the swing plane becomes really complex. Because when you, in the back swing, when you lean this way, then you tend to bring it in. But if you maintain this good reverse pivot posture here, then you will be able to maintain the same swing plane from here, let it go. And then don't, again, don't slide pelvis brother. Just to pay attention to this wind up. Good wind up and stand on the right side. Good wind up. And from here in one action, just throw. Yeah. So that's the key. Okay. Um, so again, no sliding of the pelvis. And always imagine this um, uh, cone shaped space. You're moving within that space. Yeah. So then, Instead of sliding the pelvis, naturally go here, good wind up, and then drop this side, then the left uh, knee is bent, right? Mm -hmm. From there, push the ground and then turn here. So the active turn is coming from leg push and then bringing the hip up, up and slide it backward. That will give you this pelvis turn, that will give you also shoulder turn. Yeah, so it's not Intentional upper body action, try to turn here while the legs are passive, but rather 
from here, kick in the turn. This is the key. And when the timing is not right, then you lose the, the, the power. Yeah. If, the, if you go first here and then try to drop it here, then you lose the power. But push and then wind up, throw at once. Hmm. And you have tendency of a flat backswing. So you're going this way here. But if, again, if you try to throw out, throw out, then the arms has to go here instead of going back here. When the upper arm is too, uh, you know, connected to uh, the chest here like this, you lose the mobility here. Yeah, so let it go. So the bottom line is when you feel the motion of the club, throw the club and then make a big arc in the backswing, then let the arms go with it instead of Okay, so it's really important to let the club go and then making big arc. So it goes swing, uh, the global image should be the club head moving around your body, making big arc. And then there should be no obstruction. Sometimes your body becomes a, you know, the obstructor, right? But it should be highway, no obstruction. So go up here and then good, wind up. One action, throw all the way. And then at the, at the beginning, if you let it go, if the club moves away from your body early, then it's hard to generate speed. So all you need to remember is you make a big arc around your body with the club. So during the back swing, this side is a big arc. Big arc can come here. And then on the way down, big arc on this side here. So when you have just global image of a big arc around your body, automatically you go big arc here, and it will come closer to your body, and the big arc on this side. You cannot make a big arc all the way like this. That does not happen. But if you make a big arc early on, it becomes a closer. You have a chicken wing. So the reason why we have a chicken wing Posture at the impact is because you let the club go away from your body early. So, if the goal is to make a big arc both ways, then big arc in the back swing side here, and then big arc in the follow uh, follow through side here. Okay? So, just to run the club head around your body all the way. Now, let's go to the rope swing. So, when you do the rope swing, have that image of a big arc. So your goal is to uh, run the head of the, or the end of the rope around your body, making big arc, okay? So in order to make a big arc, you just give enough speed to the rope and try to make the arc as large as possible here. Big arc here, big arc on this side. Large arc here, large arc here. So let it go all the way around your body instead of try to do something like this. Let it go all the way. Make a big arc around your body. And swing back and forth continuously. Mm -mm. Ah, uh, here, one thing. Big arc is okay, the motion is good. But if your hands go out too much, then the swing plane becomes uh, steeper. So your hands should be about here to, to give you a comfortable body posture here. So no need to bring the hands all the way out, but about here, and then turn, turn, yeah. Keeping the hands reasonably close to your body is a, a lot more comfortable. Swing, big arc around, big arc. Swing. And now on this side, on this side, in the downswing, make it a bit flatter. So instead of lifting the hands up here, Try to uh, more turn the body. Oh, the drop swing is uh, actually a lot better than your club swing. <laughs> so here the, the goal is to run the end of the rope around your body nicely. No need to snap it. Just that the motion should be continuous. 
you try to make a big arc, but give enough speed to the rope so that it can go around your body. So particularly, end of the back swing, the rope needs to go here. But if the rope slows down somewhere here, it just drops on your back, but let it go all the way. The same thing, the downswing, the end of downswing goes here. Wait until this is completed and start the turn so that you don't have to use your arms a lot. When you rush, then you use your arms. So give enough speed and then let the rope go around your body. Wait until that is completed. So two purposes here. One is a developing consistent swing plane. So as you swing back and forth, see you're moving the club along the same plane. Actually, it's quite consistent now. So that's uh, almost done. The second purpose is wait until this happens here. So you have enough time instead of rushing. Okay. Swing. As long as the end of the rope has enough speed, it will go around you, but it does not drop. So no need to do anything. Okay. Just to give enough speed and a big arc, let it go, let it go, let it go. That way you have enough time in the transition both ways and also have a consistent swing play. Mm -hmm. Whoa, Chris, your, your rope swing is really good. Swing, 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 and then keep leg action, so feel the rhythm. Overall, the body rhythm as you do, slide up and down motion, that, that will give you good rhythm. Okay, swing. All right, now look at this. You will be impressed. Mm. Yeah, that's more smooth. Mm. Yeah, you are making big enough arc here, so that rope motion is really consistent. Yeah, then uh, your right arm motion is good here. So the bottom line here is because of the speed of the rope is following the swing plane and then having good uh, rope motion at the end. So the key is giving enough speed. But, it, but if you try just to lift it up with your arms, flared arms and try to lift it up, you are losing the clever speed. So you have to let it go and then make a big arc on this side. Now let's increase the effort, swing a, a bit uh, harder. But in order to swing hard in the downswing, you actually have to have a good wind up so that you can use the body to swing hard instead of the arms, okay? And then in doing that, in doing that, you have to feel the leg action. <clears throat> Remember, reach out, reach out. So throw and then stand on the left side, throw and stand on the right side, throw and stand on the left side. You have, should have a good shift and then also active uh, rope motion. So the, in the backswing, no need to have snapping motion here, but rather it actually could wind up here. Yeah. So, so still the, it has to have a reasonable speed, but no need to have a snapping motion. But actually, the shoulder has to have enough wind up so that your body is ready to go down. Okay? Mm. Yes. So the goal, the goal in the backswing is to give extra wind up. Mm. So in, in your backswing, no need to worry about quickly coming down. When your body is uh, fully uh, mature at the position here, Automatically, you will use the body on the way down, so no need to worry about that. So in your image, your goal in the back swing is give a good throw, make a big arc, and then have enough wind up so that your body is ready to go, and then, oh, right? So increase the effort. That means a good wind up, let it go, wind up, let it go, wind up, let it go, wind up, let it go. Swing, 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 good winder, let it go, let it go, throw, throw, yes. You're a good student.
Look at this. So this type of motion versus your initial swing. Not this one. Let's look at this one. Yeah. You're not really letting the club go. You try to manipulate it. Yeah. But now wait until this is completed and then throw. Yeah, so the rope swing is really good. Yeah. Let's go to the orange whip here. Now, orange whip is somewhat flexible. So it has uh, some uh, common aspect um, with the uh, rope. But at the same time, it's a heavier. That means it's easier to feel the motion of the end. And it's a well-balanced dosage, so it's not uh, too much on this side. So it will be relatively easy to handle, but still it's heavier than the club and the rope. So you have to time everything correctly. I imagine you, you are moving something really heavy, then you really have to engage your lower body, the right? Yeah, so this will actually promote that. And particularly toward the end here, while the end of the whip is going this way, you are slowing down by using the hand. So there will be a little bit of bending at the end, but not too much. When you have a lot of bending, that means uh, the head is going this way, you're forcing it to, uh, to the opposite the way. Yeah. So you are just uh, slowing it down so that it will keep a little bit bending, not try to reverse the direction. So wait until this is completed and then swing. So minimize the bending on this side. Again, maintain consistent swing plane both ways. Use the lower body to promote the upper body motion. So feel the, feel the motion of the end of the whip. Swing, yes. Swing, swing, and very good, very good, very good. Yes, your swing is very different now. <laughs> and then on the way down, on the way down, try to use the wrist this way here. Yeah. So let it go this way. That means that you will bring the, the, the head this way a bit more, and that this will give you good uh, square impact. Okay. Instead of letting it go up, try to turn this way a little bit. So keep it a bit flatter on this side. Again, work with the, work with the whip instead of try to dominate it. Swing, swing. Throw the, the end of the whip this way. I am on the left side of target. Aha, still it's going this way. Now here, you also should be able to control the direction of the swing. Because uh, if you want to generate different uh, sh shape of the shot, then you have to control the direction. But more than anything, currently your swing is uh, slightly outward. It's because the hands go here and then try to bring the hands up here. But if I stand on the left side of target, intentionally ask you to bring the club head that way, actually your swing will be more toward the target. But, but here, in order to do that, if you maintain the same back swing position here, it's hard to change the direction. So if you want to swing to the left side more, then the back swing should be a bit more this way here, instead of going this way. If the back swing goes inward quite a bit, then downswing should be outward here. But by changing the, the way you're moving this in the back swing here, then you can change the direction you're throwing the club, right? Yeah. So if you want to shift the swing plane this way slightly, then you have to go more laterally outward instead of going backward in the back swing. So again, dance with the orange whip, swing back and forth. And make sure you are using the lower body to swing the club. Now this way, swing, yes. Swing, uh, this better, more, more this way. Swing. Ah, st still you have a good uh, amount of uh, bending here. So keep, keep more. So swing, instead of just uh, holding your hands here, let it go a bit more. Yeah, so swing here and then swing, swing. Swing, swing. So here, you have to see the, you should be able to see the end of the whip on this side. Yeah, but no crossover. Okay. Okay. When you have a crossover, then definitely either you have over the top or 
you have outward swing plane. Part of the reason why you have outward swing plane is also the right elbow position. When the right elbow is stuck here, then the only way you can do this is going out. So the right elbow has to come down straight and then go in front of your body. And then you can turn it this way here. So instead of dropping the, dropping the right elbow here and then try to go here, then this is stuck here. So elbow, elbow should be straightened here and going in front of your body, then you will be able to guide it you know, to the left side. Hmm. Swing, swing, use the, left, uh, use the leg, and then have a more active up and down feel, so rhythmic motion, swing, and they have, have a bit more time at the top. Wait until the backswing is completed, throw, completed, throw, yes. Wait a bit more, and let it go. Wind up, 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 let it go. Okay. Wind up, wind up, swing. Wind up, swing. Wind up, swing. Yeah, now if you look at your swing motion, yeah, it's a heaven and earth difference. Yeah. Swing, particularly at the top, it doesn't show much crossover. Right. It's just moving along yeah. the swing plane. Uh -huh. So the, the whip generally stays close to the swing plane all the way. Also, all you need to do is just uh, change the direction both ways. Big arc on this side and change the direction and throw this way and then bring it back. That's uh, what you do. So again, in the global image, golf swing is all about running the club head around your body and make large arc here, large arc here, and then you don't in introduce any obstruction here. Right. Sometimes your body becomes a you know, obstruction. So let it go. And let it go, stand on the right side, on the left side, right side, left side. Now let me uh, look at the, from this direction. The same thing. I feel the rhythm. Ah, one thing, one thing. And then in the downswing, your face is turning to this way. So here, from this position, your face is going this way. But actually, from here, your face is coming down to the ball. Okay? So swing. Try to have a good gaze control. Okay. So again, swing back and forth. And then uh, the turning the body, uh, the, the head. Yeah. Good, gaze control, swing, very good. Swing, gaze the ball, swing. Good, time at the top, have more time up the, at the top. S slow down well, swing. Good back swing, let it go. Good back swing, let it go. Good back swing, let it go, yeah. So, so now, overall shape of the motion is uh, a lot simpler, a lot flowing here, a lot more flowing. Yeah. Mm. So more than anything, during the, during the back action, you have to feel the motion of the end of the whip and the club, okay? Instead of going this way, right. let it go and then slow down here. So that all you need to do is Slow this down and reverse the direction using the body. Okay, the, it will also reduce the, the arm involvement. All right, the next is a club swing. Again, do the same thing. Okay, swinging the club back and forth. 
but imagine that uh, you are actually holding a rope or uh, an orange whip. So if, this, uh, if, you, uh, if it's a rope, then you will wait until the rope goes around your body. That means you have to give that much time at the top. Again, still with this, try to have a big arc around. Okay? And to feel the motion of the club here. And to throw the club and then slow down here instead of try to lift it up. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 Now, um, try to keep the swing plane uh, more inward. So I'll stay uh, on the left side of the target. Guide everything this way here. Hmm. Use the legs, use the left leg and the swing. Swing, swing, swing. Still, still the swing plane is outward. Yeah, quite outward. So you're uh, out to in or so out, going that way okay. because uh, your hands are lifted here. So go a bit higher here, and then go flat on this side. It out to in, but it's actually straight. actually it's going outward. So you have to actually. You should be able to uh, exaggerate the, the direction more the inward. So I'm staying here. Try to, try to swing this way without changing your stance. As you, in the downswing, also turn your body this way. Turn, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this way more, then what happens is, if you have intention to turn the body this way more, then the elbow goes more this way instead of coming down here. Ah. Yeah. yeah, so try to add this turn. So when you have that intention, gradually the body motion changes. Always it's really important to have the right intention. Again, the only way you can throw the club leftward or inward is on the way down, you turn the body good this way, right? Turn the body good and then stand on the left side here. But in order to do that, the elbow has to come this way instead of coming this way. Right. If the elbow comes this way, it's hard to turn this way. Here. So if the target motion is inward, then you have to prepare, prepare that in the back swing, right? And then guide the club toward me. So again, at the body turn. Swing, swing. Yeah, so really the key is, as long as you let the club go in the back swing, then everything changes. Yeah. Instead of trying to manipulate here and then and then try to do this. Let it go and then slow down while your body is preparing in the throw. That simplifies the motion. Okay? And also you will be able to feel the motion of the cliff head better. And then no obstruction here. So still currently because your swing plane is outward, so you will have tendency of hitting either to the right or slightly, you know, if uh, the timing is not right, then you can have a low hook. But we'll have to see that. But um, at least your swing, swing is now sort of stabilized. Yeah. And the, you got rid of uh, that uh, over the top tendency because you are now waiting more here. Using this momentum of the back swing, let it go in the waiting more here. No need to rush by pulling it. Right. So the over the top happens because the go it goes down here and then you quickly pull the hand down then the club has to go up, right? But if you wait here and then swing, then that does not happen. Okay. So this is really good. Now let's go to a more structured swing. So the so-called stage three of two-step swing drills. 
Stage one is this, taking two steps both ways. Stage two is taking one step toward the target. Stage three is no step here. But stage three is actually excellent for, um, the, for the pre-shot routine. Stage three, use your regular stance. The only difference here is you are using this, the so-called trigger motion. Throw the club toward target first and then bring it back and then swing. Okay, now, stage three, let's practice. So throw the club first. And then more than anything, in doing this, you have to feel the rhythm. This is the key word in golf swing is rhythm. Okay, when I have to come up with just one word, that is the rhythm. In other words, everything, you have to feel the rhythm here. It's not just the arm motion here. Use the body and then swing. The rhythm is really important. So trigger and stage three. Oh, in, in the downswing, you intentionally try to pull the arms. That has to come from the lower body. Again, so in the backswing, you only need to have a good wind-up. With good wind-up. So in the trigger motion, make sure you throw the club. Okay, Throw the club and then backswing, active backswing. Again. And the gaze control on the way down. Yeah, still you have tendency of uh, face going up here. That's uh, your habit. And you have to consciously uh, change this. Okay, so this is something you have to work on. But now the flow is better. So, uh, mm, mm, swing. Yeah. As long as you develop this good uh, flow, then your swing will be rhythmic, quite rhythmic. Mm, good. Swing. Yes, very good. Mm -hmm. And then in the trigger motion, Try to start the trigger from here and then throw this way instead of going here and then start. It's easier, however, if you keep doing this, then it's hard to use it in the regular swing. So you should be able to have a good trigger simply going this way here. That means that you have to move the body in such a way that you can do that, okay? Yeah, use the body and then introduce the trigger motion. Yes. Mm. Now, so one thing I see here is that in the trigger motion, in the back swing, you are using the leg really well. Mm. So you're doing this, pushing and then throw, and also in the back swing, pushing and throw. But what I don't see is your, your down swing, you're just turning. Down swing, the same thing. Push, and then push up here, and then also drop this way, and then kicking the ground, and then throw. I also want to see the leg action in the down swing. Trigger motion, the trigger motion and the backswing are good. Do the same thing in the downswing. Again. Mm -hmm. Again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your trigger motion, the back swing is really good. It's, it's rhythmic. Because of that, the down swing is just automatic. Okay, now let me record this. Ready, stage three, go. Okay, ready, stage three, go. Hmm. Let's first take a look at the front of you. So as you do the trigger motion, the body action is really good. Mm. Okay, go up and then start the, start with the shift motion away, and then you're turning, and you're standing good on the right side. Okay, 
but then here you're just a turning, just turning yeah. and then the head is uh, facing the sky early. Yeah. So what happens is um, up to this point it was good up to this point, and then turning here. In the downswing, the same thing. Go up and then drop this side. Mm, drop this side and kick and then throw. So during the, the during the back swing, you have to keep this recentering motion here. Yeah, recentering motion, and then recentering and the dropping at the same time. Drop more than I am. And there's a timing also, timing wise, with the recentering naturally you have to drop this side. So the, in the downswing, just they kick the ground and then throw. You have to use the left leg more actively. Yeah, just a kick and throw. And then your head will turn less. Wow. If you have active leg action here, push the naturally, your body posture like, is like this, then your gaze should be on the ball. But because you go here and then try to turn a lot, that's why the head goes first and you're turning here. But again, drop to the left side and then push and then swing. So stage three. Yeah, if you can uh, use the left leg in the downswing, then your swing will be uh, really good. So that uh, shift recentering and the, the dropping should be done at the end of the back swing. So don't worry about what your club does because you keep enough momentum, the club will go. All you need is just a slowing down, but you are preparing for the body here. And then kick and then throw. Again. Hmm. And also, also, if you try to open the shoulder early here, yeah. it's hard to use this. So go here and then keep, keep it closed. Keep it close and then your back toward the target. Here and then shift and drop here. And then uh, the pelvis is sliding. Reverse pivot push, yeah. From there, kick the, kick the ground with the left leg and then turn here. So intentionally you are dropping this side and then kick. Kick, yeah. So that recentering and the dropping should be done at the end of the back swing by using this push. So push and then you stand up and then shift backward here. Yeah? yeah, naturally you already have that. And on the way down, just to kick the ground and then turn. Again. So whether you really drop this side and push or not, if you start using the left leg actively, your swing becomes really active. So no need to excessively turn the body. Okay? Just let it go. And also here, it's not push and then drop here, rather push and then turn at the same time. Yes, the push gives you the turn motion, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so instead of push and then try to drop here, push and turn at the same time. And also the, the right arm go here, in the, instead of right arm coming down here, the right arm goes this way, in front of your body. Let it go and kick the ground and then throw. And also, it's more than the right arm coming down. Actually, it's the left arm thrown out. So keep your right hand on your belt and then stand this. Okay. And then in the back swing, bring the left arm in as much as, as possible. And then in the down swing, try to throw the left arm out. But if the hand comes down this way, 
comes down, then you are going this way here. Instead, just throw around. More, turn this way, more. Yes. And so the, the hands get, have to go a bit, a bit lower here. Mm -hmm. So bring it down and then also turn leftward. Yes. So then your arm goes here. But if you drop it, drop it and then try to bring up, then your hand goes like this. That's why you cannot change the direction of the string plane. If that's the target left arm motion, then your swing plane will be more inward, or you can bring it uh, more square. Yeah, like that. Yes. Now your hand position, arm position, is, uh, it looks a lot more comfortable. Yes. Now it's coming here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me record this. So to stage three, I'll record this and then show you. Okay. So ready, state, ready, stage three, go. Hmm. Now look at the plane. Oh, yeah. Now you're bringing the clip this way. So you can have good uh, control here. Yeah. Then you can also use the trigger motion to guide the club. So keep the trigger motion a bit flatter. So instead of lifting the club head high up, more going. And then here also, your hands are down here and the club head too high. So more this way here. Okay. This way you can actually better feel the motion of the club. If you are going high up like this, mm. the hand motion and club head motion are a bit different. Mm. So more this way here. So this way, automatically, you will be able to keep it a bit flatter, right? So make the trigger motion a bit flatter, and then start from there. Yes, that's really good. Hmm. Again. Yes. <laughs> so in order to uh, feel the motion of the clip head better, you really have to let the clip head move here. Let it go. Instead of uh, forcing it with the arm motion like this, let the clip head go and then here. So going a bit flatter here, make a strong statement that you are going to hit the ball that way. Okay. Mm, bring it back and swing that way. And then mobilize your wrist a, a bit more so that you can really move the club. Instead of forcing the club motion using your, your hands, okay? Mm -hmm. And have a bit more time at the top. Now the plane is really good, so uh, just to have a bit more mature, uh, more mature backswing. Mm -hmm. Again. Use the left leg actively so that you can maintain the balance better. If just, just the upper body turns, then you lose the balance. Yes. So that's more rhythmic in the left leg action. Yeah. So now let me record this again. Yeah, your string pattern has uh, changed quite a bit. It's true uh, reprogramming. Okay. Red, ready, stage three, go. Ready, stage three, go. In order to have good balance, you have to actually use the legs mm. uh, when you turn. But if the upper body is driving the whole thing, your lower body becomes more passive and you lose the balance because of the and at the end, still you tend to lose the grip a little bit. Okay? So it should be just continuous uh, slow down here instead of go up here and then try to let it go down more. So there is continuous motion all the way and then slow down here. 
again, watch what happens at the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end, it drops. So you just nicely slow down, and you have to wait until this is completed, and then start. So you have to uh, delay the downswing. So let the clavier go all the way down. Okay. But uh, what happens is before the clavier motion is completed, you start. Yeah, you quickly try to yeah. turn. So wait a bit more. Give more time at the top. So it's all clavier centric perspective. So if you look at the clavier motion here, you have active clavier motion, mm, and then slow down here, right? Mm, slow down and turn around. Slow down and turn around. Instead of. And also, you don't have to keep uh, the arms really rigid at the top. You can relax a little bit. So uh, you know, all you need is to have a soft deceleration and then going down. So during this period, pretty much here, you're preparing the body for the downswing. Okay? And then it, this will automatically stop eventually. And then with the body ready, <coughs> using the body, turn the upper body in the downswing. So make the backswing more, uh, more active and give more time in the transition. That's a better swing. That's better than the previous one. In the previous one, you tend to just turn quite a bit. So, the whole purpose of this active back swing is to wind up and to build the tension in the body. Okay? Build the tension in the body and let it go. So while uh, you're continuing the wind up, the muscles are going through an eccentric contraction. So a muscle lengthens. With that, you can easily generate enough force. So eccentric contraction is uh, advantageous compared to the concentric contraction. So by using this eccentric contraction and then slow down and build the tension and then let it go. So build tension and then let it go at the end. Mm. Mm. The whole purpose of this back swing is to build a good tension in the body and then using the body muscles, try to throw. But on the way down, make sure you don't slide the pelvis like this. They always you are just bringing it down, but activate, turn around, kick the ground with the left leg in the turn around. No, no, not dropping this, but just to, just to try to turn around. And then bring the hands a bit close to your body. Yes, now stage three, make the back swing really active and build the tension. Feel the tension building at the end of the back swing. And then using the body muscles, let it go. Yeah, the swing is a, a lot more active. So if the waist and above is the main uh, rotation part, then what driving the whole upper body is the muscles here, right? So if this is one unit, turn here, and then what's rotating the whole upper, upper body is the leg muscles and the pelvis muscles. With that, you're turning the body and then adding the arm motion here, okay? So that's why you have to use the, the big muscles. Again, make an active back swing with that, build the tension, and then let it go. Mm -hmm. Because your gaze is uh, leaving, that's why it's hitting the ground. So you have to have a good gaze control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because now your back swing is really active, so that just gives good flow. Keep practicing this uh, stage three. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, the flow is really good. So from now on, for, for a month, keep practicing stage three, uh, 30 swings a, a day, okay, 30 uh, stage threes a day. And then also use it as your pre-shot routine before you hit, hit a ball. Yeah, the, the flow is really good. So all you need to improve, still uh, we need to work on how to have a bit more time at the top. And then in the downswing, you don't lift your uh, face up. Again, try to throw the left arm out instead of trying to bring the right, right arm down, okay? Use the left arm, throw the left arm out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so overall the swing pattern has improved quite a bit. So let me record this uh, stage one more time and then we'll uh, put a ball there. Okay. Ready, stage three, go. Okay, ready, stage three, go. Yeah. And then instead of just trying to put a lot of effort, the bottom line, you have to really swing the club head around. So the key is fast the club head motion. And for that, you have to let the wrist, uh, you know, uh, go easy a little bit. Currently, your wrist is too, too uh, uh, rigid. From the beginning, I can tell you are holding like this, but you know it has to be a bit relaxed here. So that on the way down, throw and then let it go here. Now let's put uh, a ball here. So from now on, state the, the state three is your pressure routine, right? So always uh, when you have a ball in front of you, then first to do stage three to feel the rhythm. And then somehow you have to use that rhythm in your regular swing. So for the moment, we'll just, uh, we'll not hit uh, the ball, but just, uh, you know, practice this. So uh, initially stage three as you push out routine, Mm -hmm. Now, then you will approach it to the ball, but uh, so yeah, there. And then the backswing should be similar. Mm. Now, what happens is you go here and then your wrist is here, so and then try to push this way. But if you go here and then you through this, right? So here, hold it here. Go this way and then shift the body enough and then start the back swing. Yes, like that. So again, stay three and the regular. Again, now the regular swing, shift. And then you don't have enough time. That's why. So you had that uh, trigger motion from the beginning. But the problem is with this motion, you're shifting this way quite a bit, but essentially lifting the, the arm here. I'm not doing and then you don't have enough time. So here, instead of going this way too much, just uh, stand on this side. And then drop the right side and then turn and go all the way. So loading onto the right side is important in the back swing. So just the lift, lift to the left side, and then drop the right side, and then push, and then turn, and then give a big back swing. Wait, there, enough time there. So again.
Mm. <laughs> so here. So this is uh, sometimes when you practice with uh, not much time in between, they will help. So, mm, mm, swing, mm, swing. But the, the thing is, mm, this motion, now from now on, when you do a stage three, do not try to shift too much. Okay? Instead, push the ground with the left leg here. So load onto left side, and then instead introduce more away motion. Mm, and the away shift with the bent knee here, push and then turn around. Big arc here. And also because your grip, you're holding it this way here, when the body goes a lot here, you're lifting like this. But instead, more this way. Throw. They use the wrist motion and then throw. Okay, easy, easy wrist here. So give me that active action, that active action. Mm, that's better. But still, the, the backswing, you have to have a good push and then standing on the right side, there more time here, instead of quick motion here. Mm. And also, so let's introduce something in between. So when you have stage three in the swing, after they go to the ball here, mm. Mm. try to use the right leg and then try to throw the club. So about uh, two waggles here, and then go to the regular swing. So somehow you have to develop that rhythm so, so that you can have a smooth uh, migration from stage three to your regular swing. Yeah. That's better, that's better. So when you have enough momentum here, it will go all the way here. Okay, if uh, it doesn't go all the way, then you have to use your arms to rush down. But mm, all the way here, bring it back. Mm, all the way here, you're using the right leg for that. Then the actual swing, mm, and then swing through again. So you need to find uh, uh, the best strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm. But still your head is going up. So that's something you have to uh, uh, diligently uh, work on, okay? All right, now let's actually hit the ball. So stay three, two waggles, and then the, in the regular swing, you're actually hitting the ball. So initially, don't try to hit the ball too hard, but uh, you just uh, deliver the ball to where the ball is. Mm -hmm. And then waggles. Mm-hmm. Whoa, look at the ball bouncing this high. <laughs> this is good, this is good. Yeah, again. So no need to hold the curve really hard with, the, with, you, with your hands. So relax your wrist a little bit so that you can uh, really take advantage of the wrist range of motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good size back swing.
<laughs> Look at this. <laughs> yeah, so when you have good decays control, it will be more comfortable. Yeah, but um, so let me record this. Yeah, this is the idea. So again, state three, two waggles in uh, your regular swing. So the, the purpose of the waggle is have a good back swing. Yeah, all the way, mm, and then come down, mm, and then come down. So with that, you will pra practice your right ac action, right? All right, so. Okay, ready, state three, waggles, and the regular, go. Mm -hmm. All right. Ready, stage three, the waggles, and the regular go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stage three is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you really activated the, the right leg in the back swing. And then the way the ball is bouncing back is a lot higher now. Yeah. yeah. So this is good. All right, so that's the idea. Your state three is really good. So you have to practice this state three a lot, diligently. Okay. and then let the, the club go all the way. It's a club head centric perspective. Let it go. Yeah, this is good, good size backswing here. Yeah, using the right leg. Hmm. Well, if I go to the backswing and I lose sight of the ball, what, what could that mean? Sometimes I'll, I'll lose sight of the ball. So when uh, your, your hip moves backward too much, that you are turning the body too much here. And also you're going here. If, if it's a, it goes flat, then you tend to go like this. But this motion here, if the arms go a bit higher, then you don't have to turn that much. So this is that. Yeah, because you try to turn this way, it's hard to. So go here and then slide the reverse peer posture. Then using the peripheral vision, you can keep the gaze on the ball. Mm. And then also on the way down here. So keep working on state three so that you can even dream it, uh, you know. And uh, it shouldn't be a nightmare, okay? It should be something positive. So you are, you are performing state three really well in your dream <laughs> instead of failing and then, you know. Um, just keep working on this and that diligently, diligently. And then when you feel comfortable, then also try a stage two and stage one because there you are taking steps, so it will be a bit uh, more challenging. But uh, at the bottom is always you have the image of a club head going around your body. The whole goal is to move the club head around your body. It's not about the pleasure of your body motion, but rather turn and then throw. Okay, so if you have the image of turning this way, and then also the left arm is thrown like this, then you will adjust the plane. So that's, uh, that's uh, the, you know, what you need to work on. And uh, particularly work on the gaze control. Yeah, so uh, keep uh, maybe three or four months and see how it goes. And send me some videos so that I can see uh, how uh, you're progressing. <laughs> yeah, Great. Thank very, you very good. Much. Yep.